Hey guys, it's Coach Kathy Richardson. Welcome back to my channel. And as promised in my last video, I'm about to give you my top 10 tips to get the best night's sleep possible to help you on your weight loss journey. Hit the like and subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell too if you haven't yet so you never miss awesome content like this. So let's get started. Tip number one, you need to sleep in a dark room. And I'm talking totally dark. Guys, some of us have thinner eyelids than others. You know, that's actually a thing. And any light that's in your room is going to affect whether you stay asleep or can even fall asleep. So there's little things that we can do. You can go to the dollar store and grab yourself a handy little beauty mask like this and just stick it over your eyes. That really helps if you are in the thin eyelid club. And room darkening blinds are a thing now. They're not hard to get. You used to have to buy like these like liners that you would hook in behind your blinds. And you can do that if you have blinds that you like that aren't room darkening blinds. But room darkening blinds are very affordable now. And they can be found almost anywhere in any pattern, any color. And they really are going to keep any light from coming into your room. This is what they use at hotels. Sometimes people wonder like, how come I sleep so well when I'm in a hotel? Tip number two, keep it cool, man. And I'm not talking just about the attitude. The temperature of your room is absolutely going to determine whether you get a good night's sleep or not. If it's too hot in there, you're not gonna be sleeping well. If it's really freezing in there, you're also probably not gonna sleep well. But right around 67 degrees is allegedly the perfect sleeping temperature. So you can vary that how you want to, but just know if you're sweating your socks off, you're probably not going to have the best night's sleep. Uh, I'm currently going through menopause, and I know that I can be tossing those blankets on and off and on and off, but I also don't sleep well if I get into the bed and it's too cold. So what we like to do is use a heated mattress pad warmer, so that, or it's a gradient thing, so that it's hottest at your feet, but it's not sickeningly hot up by your head because nobody really likes like a hot face or whatever. And so we turn it on before we go to bed so it's warmed up, and then we shut it off once we get in. So we're starting off in a warm bed, but it's not gonna sweat you out while you're in there. Tip number three is no alcohol or stimulants before bed. And I can't tell you not to do that kind of stuff. You do whatever you wanna do. But if you want the best night's sleep, and if you have something important to do the next day, it might seem like it's a good idea to have a glass of wine or to have a beer or a cocktail or whatever to just wind you down and relax. And it will because those are depressants, but it's temporary and it comes at a price. And that price is going to be not as quality of a sleep and you're not going to sleep for as long. So your quantity is also going to go down. And that's the same thing, THC specifically, not CBD. That actually can help some, but THC specifically can uh, really affect the quality and quantity of the sleep that you're going to have. And I, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. If you've been prescribed Ambien or other sleeping sedatives or whatever with your doctor, that's a conversation for you guys, and I'm not going to be stepping on any toes here. But I will say, for the most part, and especially when weight loss is concerned, if you are regularly using something to give you artificial sleep, it's not going to provide the full benefits for your weight loss specifically that true sleep is going to. So tip number four is shut the TV off and better yet, get it right out of the room. And this is because we want to leave our bedroom just for sleep. Number one, there's actually two reasons why we want to do this. And so if you associate your room with movie time and hangout time and show time, your brain is not going to associate that room and your bed with sleep time. It's actually going to seem like stimulation time. So it's the opposite of what we want if we are struggling with falling asleep and staying asleep. So shut the TV off. And also, all stimulation from light. This is going to be your laptops. This is going to be your phone. So if you're scrolling in bed on your side with your phone in front of your face, they are emitting, and so is your laptop, and if your TV's close enough, so is your TV, something called blue light. And so are our light bulbs. Most of the light bulbs now are not incandescent light anymore. They're mostly LED, and they emit something called blue light. And blue light actually sends a signal to our brain to stay awake. 
and that is the opposite of what we want. So even two and three hours before you go to bed, you should start walking around and shutting your lights off. Or if you have a dimmer switch, use your dimmer switch, light a candle, use some you know Christmas lights. We have little mini lights that we leave up year round, like those little fairy lights. And it just starts to slowly get your brain and your body ready for nighttime. And this is great, especially in summer, where here in Canada, it doesn't get dark until like quarter after 10 at night. But if you are reducing the amount of light stimulation everywhere, even a couple of hours before bed, if that's possible, that's gonna be a very good thing and it's gonna get your brain ready. And so as far as those screens for your phones and for your laptops, there's actually a free program you can download and it's called F, like the letter F, Lux, L-U-X-E. And you can download that and it sets your device to your time zone where you are and it starts to filter out blue light based on when the sun sets. So it helps set your circadian rhythm that we talked about in the last video. So get the TV out, get the blue light down, turn the lights down, and just start to get things ready for bed. Tip number five. This one's heavy. Oh, literally. Jump it. It's on my lap. This is a weighted blanket, but these are cool, you guys. There's a little bit of science behind this, and I'm not going to get into it too much because I really just want this to be about products that are going to help you. But the weighted blanket helps relieve anxiety and stress and even in dogs they make like these things called thunder jackets like if you have dogs that get nervous during a storm or lightning or traveling and it's heavy on them and it's a weighted vest so this operates on that same property and there's just something calming and soothing and actually can help induce sleep when you have that heavy weight on you and this is probably why grandma's heavy quilt those afghans and homemade quilts that were so heavy and you put that on and you just conk out when I use this, I don't even change my position when I'm sleeping. Sometimes it puts me into too deep of a sleep and I actually wake up a little stiff and sore. But if you've never tried one, it's worth trying. They've really come down in price since they first hit the market like five years ago. Give it a try. So we don't want to stimulate our sleep with things that are artificial. However, if you're magnesium deficient and many people who use um, a low carb diet or a ketogenic diet, uh, they can be deficient in magnesium. And if you're doing intermittent fasting, chances are you're depleting you know, all of your electrolytes, including magnesium. And so there's one magnesium specifically called magnesium glycinate that is showing lots of uh, benefits to help you go to sleep. It helps you relax you. Again, it's an anti-anxiety thing. It's very calming. You can also get magnesium transdermally, meaning through the skin with an Epsom salt bath. And that alone, especially if you put a couple of drops of lavender into your water while you're having your bath, that's almost like taking a sleeping pill. It's amazing how effective magnesium is. And so what I do, and again, I'm not telling you to do this, you talk to your doctor. I'm just telling you what I use. And I've talked about this in other videos, but it's ZMA, and this is by the brand now, and I can link it from my Amazon store uh, in the comments below. But it is a zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B6 combo. And this aids in muscle recovery too if you're a gym rat or if you work out. But the magnesium in this, I take this 30 minutes, one pill, because I'm a little smaller. If you're a little bigger, you might need two pills. It tells you how to dose on the back, if your doctor approves. <laughs> but one of these 30 minutes before I go to bed and I'm calming down and I'm relaxed and I feel sleepy and ready to go to sleep. And I swear by these. Chamomile tea is another thing that you can take and you know go ahead and clear it with your doctor if you want to but you know it's it's at any grocery store and it's very calming it's very soothing and it's ap actually an apigen which is a chemical compound that helps relieve stress and anxiety and can induce sleep so having a cup of tea before you go to bed take your epsom salt bath and take some uh, chamomile tea in the tub with you you'll be surprised how calm and soothed you feel and ready for sleep Tip number seven is a noise machine or a fan. Having some type of ambient noise in the room really can make a difference. A lot of people, especially when they shut that TV off, it sounds a little too quiet and it weirds them out and you feel like you hear everything and uh, every little creak and, you know, so if you need something that's just a calm, a constant hum, a constant drum, the fan is great. 
my husband sleeps with a fan 365 days a year. Doesn't matter how cold it is, we have a fan going. So I've actually gotten used to that too. And I've seen where a lot of new parents always have a fan going in the room for their baby and they don't point it at the baby, but just that constant noise can really help a colicky baby soothe themselves down. And it goes back to like womb noises and it mimics that hearing the mother's blood rushing, you know, through the womb and whatnot. And so, an um, Another thing you can get on Amazon, this one takes batteries and my batteries are dead, otherwise I would play this for you. But this was just a little battery operated noise machine that I got for when my husband and I go camping because he really misses that fan noise that we're both used to. And so this just has little ones that you can use the button and click right through and you can try different noises there. Tip number eight, and this is a big one and this has research behind it. And it's keep a regular sleep pattern. If you work Monday through Friday and you're getting up at six in the morning, but then you sleep in on Saturday and Sunday until 10 or 11, you're really messing with that circadian rhythm. And trying to get that righted and regular and normal is the best thing you can do for your sleep according to doctors. And so even if you get up at six in the morning on Saturday and Sunday, and then you have a little nap at 10 in the morning for a half hour, that's totally okay but your body is going to want to get up at the same time every day and it's going to want to go to bed at the same time every day. And every single time you disrupt that pattern, you're robbing yourself of the best chance for the best quality of sleep for the night. Tip number nine is a big one for your weight loss journey. And I've preached this before and I'll continue to preach it. Stop eating three hours before you go to bed, minimum. You know, if you can only do two, that's okay, but three is the sweet spot because you're not gonna be going to bed hungry, but you're not gonna be going to bed with so much food in your stomach that your body then needs to digest it all night long. And so when it's time for bed, your whole entire body needs rest, and that includes your digestive system. And if you have just bombarded it with all kinds of food or alcohol or both, it's gonna be busy all night long and it's not gonna get a chance to rest. And that's exactly why you won't reach REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement sleep. That's the very deep sleep. If you use an aura ring or a smartwatch and you see like light sleep and deep sleep, the deep sleep is the REM sleep. That's where muscle recovery happens. That's where fat loss happens. And that's also where our immune system boosts the most. And this is where cortisol drops the most. And we know cortisol is like the stressed out hormone and it's the one that can make us make a lot of belly fat. So you are absolutely not giving yourself the best chance possible for quality and quantity sleep that's going to aid in your weight loss journey and weight maintenance if you're eating right before you go to bed. So cut it off three hours before. Tip number 10 is keep the bedroom for sleep only. We talked about that, but here's one thing you can do. Try reading. If you have the light in the room dimmed and you've got your weighted blanket on and you've got your noise machine going and you've taken your magnesium if your doctor's approved and you're still just kind of like I just can't fall asleep try reading in your room that's actually the activity that is okay and so put a book beside your bed and get a little book light and so just try reading it's going to be not so stimulating that you're going to want to stay up all night long. I mean, sometimes if you get a really good book, it can happen, but nine times out of 10, if you really try to stay awake so you can read, you're probably gonna fall asleep. I don't know how many times I've smashed myself in the face with a book because I was reading and ugh, just fell asleep and, and uh, next thing you know, you're almost getting a free nose job. So give reading a try. That's an, a bedroom approved activity. And here's a bonus. We're gonna learn this together. There's one activity you can do to regulate your own nervous system. And this is great if you are stressed out or if you're feeling kind of out of control, this is just a little activity that can remind your body that you are in control. And it tells your central nervous system that you're in control. And so it's called two in one breathing and it's super simple, we're gonna do it right now. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a breath through your nose, you're gonna hold it, you're gonna take one more breath, and then let it out slowly. So breathe in, breathe in again, hold it and let it out. You do that five, 10 times when you're laying in bed, it is so calming. Even just doing it right now, I feel more calm. 
And at the same time too, or after, you can start to squeeze and contract your muscles in your feet and your toes and kind of curl them up and then let them go. And then squeeze your calf muscles and squeeze it and hold it and then let it go. And then take your thigh muscles and squeeze them and hold it and then let it go. And then do your bum and then your abdominal and then your chest and then your neck and squeeze it and then let it go. And then try the again. That is so calming. And it's going to tell your body, everything's okay, we're not in danger, and it's okay for you to go to sleep. So I hope you like these 10 tips. Give any one of them a try. You know, you don't need to do all 10 of these. Any one of these could be the game changer for you. But these are the top 10 most recommended, with a bonus, tips to help you get a good night's sleep. I hope this works for you. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any other ideas that have helped you fall asleep. And we'll see you next time for our next video. Bye!